Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, check it out. We're in Slicer. Uh, and as you can see, we have a Batman model. Maybe it's Batman. I can't tell under all those heavy-handed supports because we're going to be talking about how to remove some of those heavy-handed supports. Uh, so today we're specifically talking about Slicer's new uh, support blockers and some port enforcers. And I figured, who's the best enforcer in, in you know, the Heroverse? Batman, right? Um... <laughs> By the way, if you do hear my printer running, the Mark IIs is printing like crazy, and it's right next to me. So since it's printer-related, I'm leaving it, but hopefully it's not too annoying. Uh, but yeah, let's go back to this. So right here we've got Batman. We can tell Slicer is very heavy-handed with the supports. I mean, check out the back of the sky right here. That is that is some extra special supports. So let's go to the 3D view. And uh, we're going to be using modifier meshes. So that's basically how this works. And there is a much more in-depth video in my video list on modifier meshes. So if you want to learn a lot more about modifier meshes in specific, uh, which will help you out in this, go watch that. But right now we're going to be talking about two things, which is support blockers and support enforcers. To, to get, so to get to this, we need to double-click our model. Or you can right-click and go to settings. So we're just going to do the fast way, double-click. And here we are. Here's Batman in all his glory. Um... Looking all mean and tough. This is a really cool model, by the way. So, we need to do a couple things. Uh, basically, we need to make uh, rectangles or uh, or cylinders or circles or spheres, I mean, to remove supports. And the way to do this is we just go to load generic, which is right here on our menu. So, we're right next to load part, load modifier, load generic. And we need a generic box. I think that worked the best. So, we're going to do... Something huge. Uh, always always use something bigger than you really need. So a 60 by 60 by 60 box. And hit OK. And you can't see it because it's hiding right underneath here. But there's our box. And when we select it, we get some options. So here's our part settings for that box. You can also click over here. So Batman Lambda box. So here's our Lambda box. We have the type. We need to change this to blocker. And the reason we're only working on blockers right now is because when you first launch the new version of Slicer, only blockers is enabled. So you might try to use the support enforcer, and guess what? It won't work. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But for right now, if you're using standard support, you just loaded this in. Support blockers is what you use. So you generate the supports. You look at them like, oh, I don't like that many supports. I'm going to remove some. So we have the support block. And the easiest way to see this is to watch the bed. We'll click on this, and we play the, play the game. So let's actually rotate this. So here is our um, our axes. So we're going to move the X. And again, this is why I always pick a box that's too big. So we can play the little mini game, as Eric likes to call it, of sliding the box around. And right there. We don't need it right on the shoulder. And then the Y up. And, oh, wrong direction. Y up. Boom. So what that little block's going to do is he's going to block all the supports. We also make sure that yep it cuts into the shoulder you have to make sure the support blocker is actually blocking uh, where it's going to touch on the model touching on the base doesn't matter as much so we can actually use a shorter box and lifted the z up but we went with the big box uh, i'll actually show you in this one so load a generic again because we need to do the left hand side uh well his right hand side my left hand side so we'll do a 60 by 60 by 40 so that way i can show you this works hit okay so underneath we have a not as tall, same same size box-ish. So we're going to move this guy over here. And that looks good. And move it this way. Yeah, we're figuring it out. And voila. So now we have the boxes there. And as you can see, it's not touching the shoulder. And that means it's still going to generate supports there. So we need to lift that up a little bit. So we're going to go up. And you can see this is now in the air. And uh, we can actually move this out a little bit more. So let's move the X a little bit more. And this one too. Move this one a little bit more. There we go. So now we got all that support blocker action going on, right? So hit OK. And you can see the support blockers. And actually, let's, let's double check. So that's still green. Let's make sure we set that support blocker. Oh, I didn't. So modifier, support blocker, hit OK. Now they're both red. See, this is why color coding is important. So now we're going to go back to the preview and hit slice now. And I probably shouldn't have picked such a detailed model because the slicing is going to take longer. But come on, that Batman model is super cool. It's on Thingiverse. It's free to print. 
Um, and I figured, you know, again, who's the best enforcer? You know, come on, Batman. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is basically how it works. So again, watch the modifier meshes video and they give you a little bit more info on how these shapes and things work. Uh, but for this video, you don't need uh, too much information. You just need to know what they do and how to do it. So uh, this is just a nice quick one. And you can see that the support blockers work perfect. And remember the one on this side, his right hand side, or right shoulder side, he's missing his hands, um, was floating in air, but it removed that and we're good. And I think we're going to add one more box and we're going to remove this off the back. And I think that's pretty good. I mean, we don't need all those additional supports on his back here. So let's go back to the 3D preview. Let's double click on our Batman. And let's add one more generic. And we'll do, this one has to be pretty long. So we'll do 100 by 100. Again, these, you know, heights and things are by 100. Um, doesn't matter because you're sliding them around. So here's our Giganto box. And we're going to slide that around. So X. Oop. Got to click it first. And we got to change it to blocker like I forgot to do last time. So let's slide this around right there. Perfect, and then we'll use the y-axis, wrong direction, because we do need some of that support, just don't need the one to scrape in his back a little bit, right there, that should do it, you can you can type these in to make it a little finer adjustment, well that should be good, I really don't need, heck I don't need any of the supports back there, that is not a steep angle, yeah, I'll move that around, so the y can move, it's this way. Let's move all those back supports off. There we go. Hit OK. Boom. We got a bunch of support blocking action. So slice now. And we'll go back and watch your preview. And I guarantee you that that worked. <laughs> I think. Um, again, apologize for the way over detailed model. But I think this proves a point. Because a lot of the guys are going to be using this. Or people are going to be printing things that are very intricate. And they don't want supports to mess up how beautiful the print is. And again, you could, this could be important for certain other aspects. Uh, so but remember, if you need more information, I do have an entire video on support blockers. So there we go. We have no supports under his shoulders and no supports under his back. Just like we wanted. So now we've got supports exactly where we need it. So there's that. Now let's go back. Let's go back here. Let's double click him. Let's delete all these boxes. We don't need these. We'll uh, delete this part and we'll leave that part. And we're going to start from square one here. We'll go back to original Batman state. And if we go to our print settings and we look at support material, there's a checkbox here. And that is called auto-generated supports. So this is why blockers only work is because it is auto-generating the supports. You add the blockers to remove the auto-generated supports from where you don't want. If we want to use the support enforcer mode, that's easy. We go to auto generate support and we turn that off. We go back to the platter and, um, you know, we're not going to have any supports if I hit um, preview. We're not going to do that because that's going to take forever. So we're going to go double click and we're going to make one giant crazy thing for support. So a little generic. Let's make a, I don't know. 60 by 60 by 100 sized box. Hit OK. And there's our box. And it just gets to his chin. But we'll include his nose and eyes because I think those do need some supports. So let's go back to our mode here. And we'll we'll move. Oh, we gotta select it. And we gotta make sure it's set to support enforcer, which is a different color. It's blue. I like these colors. So we'll move this to the center here, right there. And the Y goes this way. Oh, I always pick the wrong way. This is why it's called the game. You can never remember exactly where you want that to go. And that looks like it did it. And then we need to do the Z to make sure we get, you know, we'll leave the eyes alone. We'll get it just to the nose. There we go. His nose in there? Yeah, his nose in there. So that's where we want supports. That's where we're telling this guy, Mr. Slicer, where we want supports. So we're going to hit OK. And there we go. There's our little Lambda box highlighting. 
It's like surrounded by a blue shield around his face. Mr. Freeze. All right, we'll go to the preview. We'll hit slice, and we will see that it's going to add supports exactly where I said it was. And hopefully I practice this enough so you know that I'm not just making this up. Because if it doesn't work, I have to redo this entire video. Because I do these things in one shot. <laughs> so, um, there's no cutting, no special effects. I just record the video. But that makes it faster. So, and it keeps them short. So here we go, we're almost done. And we should have our enforced supports from everywhere. And there you go. We have a whole bunch of supports. And it's still a little heavy handed. We can change the size of the box and whatnot, but... It is supporting all the things that we want supported instead of supporting underneath the shoulders and arms and it's not doing the back. So either way, I think it's faster on some models to use the Enforce and on some models it's faster to use the uh, the blockers. So it just depends on what you do. So learn how each works. They're very powerful. Uh, the bearded Batman here will turn out like a nice successful little print. So hopefully that helps you guys out using the new features in Slicer. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I will put a link to the latest version of Slicer in the uh, description. I'll put a link to the Batman in the description. And I'll put a link to my modifier meshes video in the description as well. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and stay tuned for more things.